We're here at Wheeler's Motorcycle Shop at Tail of the Dragon, and today we're going to tackle changing the tires out on this motorcycle. This one might be a little different from yours. I don't have the tabbed spokes on the wheels, so I've got an inner tube to deal with, but otherwise the process is about the same. we got to take these two bolts out of the top of this cover, and then it lifts up and comes out where we can get to the battery and the connectors to undo this cable so that we can take the rear motor out. So let's get started. There's three plugs to remove here in this order. One, two, three. So you unplug them from right to left just because they're overlapping each other, mostly because it's just for, you know, accessibility's sake. So these first two plugs have a, a tab that you have to push down and slide back to get them to release. It's pretty easy. This last one's a little bit harder. You gotta squeeze this little red tab down, just push on it, and it opens up this metal tab and releases, and then you can sort of wiggle it out. You might have to work on a little bit to wiggle it out. And that third plug comes a little cover that you can pop on there to protect that connector. Okay, it goes on with the cable facing tab going downwards like that. So these two screws on each side of the battery have to come out as well and then the battery slides out. All right, so next we've got to get in here and a couple tabs here that just hold down the back of this cover and it pops off and then you have to follow the the lead for this down and unplug it on this cover down here and that'll be the next step <laughs> removing the four bolts underneath the frame for the uh, heat sink here to get to the cables All right, so the two blue wires, the blue, the green, and the yellow are the ones that go back to the electric motor. Okay. Those are all going to come off. All right. And those screws are pretty tight for a Phillips, so we use the 10 millimeter socket here. And of course, note the order that they're plugged in, blue, green, yellow. All right, and this little cable right here that powers the lighting on the license plate and everything, it runs in and it's just connected right there. So we're just gonna pop this off. We're gonna get that. So there's another series of wires coming off this cable and it's this connector. Where was that at? Was that in the front? Right here. And it was right there. So that connector that was right there has been got to get this one disconnected too. and this one. So both those in there, right? Might be a diagnostic cord or something. Oh yeah, it's already plugged. Okay, so that's not a disconnected thing, it's just a pulling out thing. Okay, so we're gonna start snaking this through this hole here. And there she is, all disconnected from the bike. So in total, there's those three main uh, cables, and then these two. One is actually just blocked off, so you don't have to unplug it from anything. This one right here is a diagnostic, and then this one right here you just have to unplug. And of course, then I said, like I said earlier, this one for the license plate tail light has to be unplugged inside the top up there as well. And now we're ready to remove the rear wheel. All right, we're fortunate enough to have a winch here to lift the bike up from, but if you don't, just use a rear stand that has these cup connections like this, and you can get it up under the rear swing arm, lift it up from up here so that you can get these bolts out.
take note of how much force it takes to break them loose. There's probably a torque spec somewhere, but we haven't gotten it from Saunders, so we're just going to wing it here. Okay, so this metal piece right here, just have to keep wiggling it back and forth. It's kind of snug, but it eventually walks its way off that bolt. I think it is. That little lock washer in there makes it a little tricky. Okay, so unlike a normal bike, you don't pull the axle out the side. This whole assembly slides out the back because the motor has to have something to put torque against to create propulsion. So this can't be free spinning like a normal motorcycle. This is locked in place. So you have to take this arm off so that you can slide the whole axle assembly out the back. So that's what we're working on now. You gotta take out these two bolts right here. <clears throat> You gotta break the bolts loose on both sides to get the axle loose enough to slide out the back. That metal plate's probably gonna be like the other side where you just gotta wiggle on it until it comes out, but it's it's a little finicky. Might be. There we go. All right. So nuts off of both sides and little silver plates off of both sides. And you can see that this axle is notched so that it can't spin inside the swing arm like a regular motorcycle one. So now, moment of truth. All right, so one thing to keep in mind if you're used to changing regular motorcycle tires is this is quite heavy. So you have to pick up quite a bit to get it to slide in that slot and come out. It's gonna feel like it's hanging, but it's just because this weighs like 100 pounds assembly or whatever. Ooh. <laughs> it's heavier than the battery. <laughs> it's heavier than the battery, he says. All right, now we gotta figure out how to change a tire on this thing. Just take. Yeah, and take note, there's a collar on the, uh, on the axle there on the inside that uh, has to go back in there before you mount it back up. So to get that core out of that valve, we used a valve cap that has a pulling to it. Because it's so tight. And the wheel and motor weighs about 68 pounds. Battery weighs... 56 pounds. Now the axle is protruding, may cause a problem on some tire machines, but they clear this one okay. So we got to, and like I said, this one not having the tabs on the edge of the wheel where the spokes go to means we've got to deal with the inner tube. So we're working on getting that out. He's working on getting that out. There you have it. That's one of the early version of the wheels with the spokes on the inside. And there's where your air leaks will come from if you don't have an inner tube, which is why they went to the outer spokes on the outside of the wheels so you don't have to deal with all that. And the inner tube that we took out, you can see where it was pinched in several places um, when it was installed and it was in there like that. A lot of pinch points. so. Uh, a good tire shop will usually use something like baby powder to make sure that this doesn't happen um, and the inner tube stays uniform. So we're going to replace it with a new inner tube and install it properly so it doesn't end up like this. Now he's reusing the rubber strip that came out with the uh, stock 
um, inner tube that was in there to go back in there and sort of give it a little cushion against the spoke ends. Um, and then we're going to put the new inner tube in and get ready to mount up the new sticky sticky tire. A little baby powder in there to let things slide around and install a little bit cleaner. A little bit of tire lube on the beads to let it seat properly and not end up with a high point like uh, some of the people have been reporting on the bikes they've been getting from the factory. Yeah, and actually this is the tire that came off of it and I don't know if it's coming through on the video but you can see and definitely feel where the tire was not beaded uh, uniformly all the way around. There's a big dip right there where it wasn't put on correctly and that was causing my hop. I'll do a little pre-inflation of the tube in there so that it takes out any of those wrinkles and puts the tube in position so that we don't have any problems that way. <laughs> I forgot how heavy that is. <laughs> Throw your back out. All right, with the tire mounted back up, we're ready to slide this back in. Now, of course, this flat side of this uh, axle needs to slide into and you know match this slot right here. So it might be handy to have a second person to help kind of lift it up while another person slides that in because you can't roll it in like a normal um, bike. So I'm gonna help them out here. Okay, now with no chain adjustment or length adjustment like a normal axle goes, you just slide this all the way forward and then the little metal plate that uh, goes in there sort of locates the, the axle and a, and a specific distance and everything so your wheelbase doesn't change. Yeah, part that I was concerned about. Okay, so we've got the three thick wires fed in here and they're starting to come out the bottom. We're gonna feed these two um, blocks, these two connectors through here um, and they go to the top of the control box in there and these three thick wires are three different lengths so it makes it pretty obvious which one goes to which connector that way too I'm running these three phase wires back to the controller for the motor is a little bit tricky. They fight you and don't want to cross thread those bolts that holds them in place. They're color coded. So you can see that there's like blue on the connection for the blue wire, but they run down underneath this orange conduit and then hop over it to connect. So the, it, they want to lay like right in here when you get done. It's a little tricky to get them all in place. But as you're routing it in, just keep that in mind that they they kind of stay down in this area here, out of this channel. Okay, so we just realized that there's like a top and a bottom to each one of these tabs. And so you want the tab to be oriented so that the thick part is downwards and the tab is kind of at the top. So this one needs to go on flipped over like that, upside down. That's the way it should go. Okay, this part's proven really tricky, getting this heat sink back up on there. Um, everything's super tight and kind of pushing back down against it, so we're having to work really hard to get these big cables to lay right and not get any connectors on the top pinched up in there. So just take your time with this and be ready to fiddle with it a little bit here. 
All right, so that was quite a workout getting this thing back up in there and lined. I would highly advise that you take very careful notes about the routing of those three thick cables on this side of this heat sink up above it. Of course, you can't see them right now, but they really played havoc in getting this back up in there and fighting us. Um, and I'm not sure if we have them laid in the exact same way they were from the factory. So. Zip tie the cable back up against the swing arm so it doesn't touch the tire. So one of the things that we noticed was that we have too much length in this cable now. It's sticking up too high and the cover won't go on it if I try to put it on. And I think what we've done is we didn't orient this axle piece like it was in the factory. So there was more of a loop down here of this cable hanging down with just another zip tie right here, Brian. I don't know if it needs to come off. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna put some more links into this cable in this direction, and that way it'll pull it out of the top up there uh, a little bit better. We just realized we forgot to put this cover over those cables, so. Yeah, don't be like us and forget that part because that was a pain to get up in there in the first place. Oh, that's not too bad. And take note on ours at least, that little cover does not set flush right there and it, wasn't, it was not flush when we took it off, I'm pretty sure. It won't go down because this orange cable has a high knot on it that's holding the whole thing up. Putting this flat panel in, it's tricky to get all the components in the exact same place they were. So, take note uh, and take pictures of where everything's at as you're taking this apart, so that you know where everything, every little connector goes, because it's so tight in there. Okay, I didn't like the way that these wires were basically raw dog in the edge of this plastic cover, and it was kind of a sharp corner on it. So, I took a file and just sort of smoothed off the corner of this plastic cover under there where those wires are touching it. Um, all right, battery's ready to go back in now. Connectors go on the top. It's got some rails in there that you gotta work it into, so yeah, just take your time. So it had to be twisted just a little bit, rotated to get it to line up with the brackets look like. And now we reinstall these, these brackets to hold the battery in place. And while he's working on that, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the front brake disc caliper removal here. You just need to remove these two bolts and then the caliper comes out. One of the things you can do to make re-installation a little easier on yourself is to just spread these brake pads apart a little bit while you got it off so that when you go to put it back on, they'll slide on a lot easier. But make sure you pump the brakes back in before you go right off and uh, you don't have any brakes for a couple of pumps there. They've got some hooks here for this type of thing, so I'm going to hook it up here to the brake to the uh, turn signal. All right, now that we got the caliper off on the other side, we come around to this, uh, the right side here and loosen up this axle nut. Or axle bolt, I should say. Okay, on this side, once you have the, the bolt out on the right side, this side just slides out. And spacers, keep track of everything that comes out. And this should go more along the lines of a traditional motorcycle tire swap with a tube. 
And then of course, put all the cables back in in the same, the opposite order you took them out. So the left cable and then the black one and then the orange one, pop them in, make sure. And I would advise you to leave this cover off until you test and make sure uh, everything works on the bike. If it, listen for anything that sounds bad and be ready to pull this cable out um, if, uh, if anything starts making smoke, starts releasing the smoke. Don't forget your fob to re-engage the battery before you start this process, wherever you take it. Remember, when you disconnect the battery, you have to have this thing to turn it back on and marry it to the motorcycle. I forgot that, had to go to the house. So here we go. I am going to, I hate this janky ass cover for the cell phone compartment. So flimsy. All right, turn it on. in drive fairly good and give it a little throttle look at that so much better now a little bit of noise you hear is not uncommon it's just where the brake pads are touching the brake disc um, I'm gonna pump this front brake up. Okay, you already did that, just to make sure. You still got a little bit of a hop from potentially being out of balance. Now we didn't balance this wheel because there's no real way to balance it. The shaft in the middle does not come out, the cable stays attached, but it weighs so much that a few grams here or there is on the tire is probably not gonna make much of a difference, but the spokes could still be out of uh, true because these are just all spokes are adjustable among, is that fair to say? Um, so we may need to check the true, but it seems to be pretty close. I can still feel a little bit of vibration at a certain speed here as it, as it accelerates, but it looks a lot better and feels a lot better than it did on the stock tires. right there yeah there's still a vibration something's something's out of balance or the spokes are not true yeah what speed is that can you tell? 65, 63. So it smooths out. I'm going to put it in sport mode. It should take it up to about 80. There's full throttle in sport mode. It's showing 80 ish. Yeah, 80 is 74. Oh, okay, 84. 70, 84. Yeah. It's hard to read that display. So it's pretty smooth now at higher speeds, so I don't know. Usually if it's a balanced thing, it'll get a little worse with speed. It almost seems like it's a spoke thing, like maybe an out of, I don't know that that would get worse too. I don't know, it's weird, but it still has a little vibration hop at a certain speed and then it clears out. So now we get to go test them out. Thanks again to Wheeler's Performance Motorcycle Shop in Robbinsville, North Carolina. I tell the Dragon, hit these guys up for anything that you need. Um, when you're in the area visiting or otherwise, they, they can hook you up. They got good deals on tires and parts and always take care of people. Good folks. Thanks, y'all.